Hey guys, no thank you here. I've always looked like this. I've always looked like this. It's currently 8 a.m. right now. And um, I've basically been informed that I'm going to have to be awake. Oh, yeah, I, I wore the same outfit in, like, my last video. I, I have two of these shirts. This isn't the only shirt I own. I have two with the same, the same design on it. The other one's in the wash. I have two of them. I only have one pair of, of these sunglasses, though. Um, I've been informed that I'm going to have to... Uh, it's 8 a.m. right now, and I've been informed that I'm going to have to be awake for another at least five hours. Um, and so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in a video. We're going to need a little help from my friend here. A little help from my friend here. Zero calorie. This is my new drink of choice, is zero calorie Red Bull. It's good. I, I don't remember if I ever actually posted the video where I did this before, so I'm pretty sure I didn't. So we're going to do it again here, and that is I'm going to list all of the mental Dis disorders that I have. I know I'm doing disorders in quotes. Whatever. I'm going to list them all. And the reason I think it might be interesting is because, like, you guys are watching this channel because you want to hear all the random shit that goes on in my head. Like, this channel is where I put all the random shit that happens in my head. And maybe if you know what my head was, what's wrong with my head... That might be interesting to you, I don't know. So I'll go in order from m most certain to least certain. It's a bit complicated, but I'll explain why Why I'm not most certain. Why not just go with whatever you're officially diagnosed with? Well, that can start off with, with the, first, the first one. So when I was... Let's just say around... 15, 16, I was diagnosed with depression, right? And uh, that happened. And then I was I, I was diagnosed with depression for years. And eventually I was like, I'm, I'm too depressed. I got to take CIA brain control pills, a.k.a. SSRIs, antidepressants, right? I took them. Made me go nuts. Made me go completely fucking nuts. If you want to see me going nuts, I actually had this YouTube channel at the time. I was making videos. You can scroll down. Made a video called Sertraline Sermons. The antidepressant I was on was called Sertraline. You can go down, down, scroll back through the channel and find that video and videos from around that period. That was when I was on the antidepressants and I think it's fairly obvious that I was fucking nuts. Um, that is the time period when I started chewing all of my T-shirts. It gave me this habit of chewing all of my T-shirts, which I still haven't completely gotten over. It gives a lot of people ticks going on these antidepressants. My tick was chewing on my T-shirts, and they, they don't go away even when you get off the antidepressants. Uh, but I went completely nuts. Um, eventually I got off of them because I was going completely fucking nuts. And, um... Well, it turns out that uh, they misdiagnosed me. I don't have depression. I actually have bipolar 2. And this is one of the reasons why I'm not just going by whatever clinicians have told me I have. There's also a bunch of other stuff, but, you know, uh, they misdiagnosed me. So I'm not actually depressed. I'm bipolar. So that's I'm officially diagnosed with bipolar. Uh, secondly, dyscalculia an interesting one. Dyscalculia is kind of like dyslexia for numbers. It's a, uh, it just, it means I have trouble with numbers in certain situations. So stuff like dividing, counting backwards, minusing, reading analog clocks, stuff like, there's certain things like that that are very difficult for me, more difficult for me than for regular folks. 
Now, I'm not actually officially diagnosed with dyscalculia, but my clinical psychologist basically said to me, you almost certainly have this. Do you want to bother going through the rigmarole of doing an official diagnosis? And I said, not really. What's the po-? I said, what's the pop po- word? Like, why would I, like, I, we talked about it. It didn't happen in the space of two sentences. We talked about it. And it seemed like there would be no real advantage to having it officially diagnosed compared to the whole process that that would be. Um, and so I was just like, he, he said, yeah, that's, that's cool. But I'm, it's pretty certain that I have it. Not too bad. But it's a, there's a scale of how bad you can have it. I don't have it too bad. I have it fairly, fairly minor comparatively. Um, okay, next. Um, autism. Autism, I'm undiagnosed, self-diagnosed. Uh, however, I do have some, if you need to see my credentials, I do have some credentials, which is that I've been to multiple psychiatrists or psychologists or whatever, and they they have multiple, too, have referred me. So, yeah, mul- multiple, I basically I've been referred to get an autism diagnosis officially. The problem is that in the UK, there is a very, very long waiting list to get an autism diagnosis as an adult on the NHS. Uh, 16 month waiting list, which I'm still on. So I'm on the waiting list to get a diagnosis, just waiting. But I think if you if you know anything about me, it's fairly obvious that I'm autistic. Uh, so, so yeah. Uh, I probably have some others that I'm forgetting about. Um, bipolar, dyscalculia, autismo, Sometimes I think I have ADHD, but I don't think I actually have ADHD. But sometimes I think I might, but I don't. I don't think I do. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I know one. This one I definitely, definitely have 100%. Is uh, health anxiety or uh, hypochondria, as it's sometimes called. I definitely have that diagnosed officially. Everything, the whole, the whole shebang. Um, that one sucks. It's probably the worst one. Uh, don't want to have that. It sucks. Uh, I also have... Well, I was in the past diagnosed with general anxiety, but I don't really have general anxiety so much anymore. <sighs> oh, God, this is the tiredness catching up with me. Come on, friend. Get inside of me. So there's my there's my problems. I said I'm forced to stay awake due to reasons beyond my control. Those reasons are well, it's currently eleven AM. Uh I'm less tired than I thought I would be, but then I don't know why I thought I'd be that tired. Uh the reason being my mother hires a cleaner to come once a week because she has unrealistic standards of cleanliness due to the fact that she's worked in hospitals her whole life. And, um, you know, that that would give someone an unrealistic standard of cleanliness. The house is perfectly clean. We, we It's not like we don't clean all week and then the cleaner comes and does it all for us. We clean all the time. She has a cleaner on top of both of us cleaning all the time. It's a bit ridiculous. Uh, but the cleaner is going to come in an hour. Uh, and if I had gone to sleep in accordance with my sleep cycle, I would have gotten like three hours, four, four. I wouldn't have gone very much sleep before I would have been woken up by that happening and that would have been shit that would have sucked because the cleaner's here for two hours god knows what it takes two hours to clean a fucking house but whatever and that's like vacuuming and stuff 
And even if I slept through the vacuuming, I'd have to get up anyway because she'd come into my room. Uh, lots of loud noises. Not sleepable. So I kind of was forced to... I had no choice other than to just stay up until she's gone and then sleep. Which, there's a bunch of problems because now I'm... Now my sleep cycle is going to be out of sync with my friend's sleep cycles. Um... And uh, the other problem is, I was quite liking my fucking sleep cycle. Shut the fuck up, drillers. They're still not done. My life is hell. Um, this is a very distracting noise. Um, I was quite liking my sleep cycle. I would, I would wake up at like, I don't know, 3, 3 p.m., do what I got to do, have a day, then like 11 till like 6, play Minecraft, you know, watch a couple of YouTube videos, go to bed. Very comfy, very comfy sleep cycle. Um, um, it's night time, it's all peaceful and quiet, there's no drillers that's disturbing me. Um, now the trade-off for that is that the drillers disturb me while I'm sleeping. Thankfully, they haven't been too loud recently uh, that I couldn't get back to sleep after I was woken up by them. Uh, it, I mean, there's no way to turn the drillers off, right? I would rather, if I could sleep through it, that would be the ideal, because then it would be basically like it's not happening. Can't do that because they're going to wake me up, inevitably. So, um, I don't know. Like, right now, when they're not being too loud, it's, then then being asleep while the daytime's happening is good, because I don't notice them so much. I only get woken up once or twice while I'm asleep, and I can easily get back to sleep, and it's fine. Uh, whereas, it's really fucking annoying trying to, like, do anything while you have loud no drilling noises going on in the background. It's just really distracting and annoying. However, uh, if they were being louder, then I couldn't get back to sleep easily, or they would wake me up more often during the night. Then it would be better to have the drilling noises during the day so I can actually get some sleep. So there's not really a good answer here. Um, the answer is... I live in hell. Uh, but yeah, I was enjoying my comfy sleep cycle, and now I'm going to have a fucked sleep cycle, where I'm, I mean, one could argue that waking up at three in the afternoon is fucked already. But that's like, I don't know. Now I'm going to have a fucked sleep cycle while I'm going to bed at three and, well, I'm, I don't know. Sorry, did I say going to bed at three in the afternoon? Is, is, I said I meant waking up at 3 in the afternoon, if I should go into bed. Now I'm going to be going to bed at 3 in the afternoon, f completely f flip it and reverse it. And, um, that's like, that's terrible. That sucks. I don't know what to do about that. I know I just don't want it. Sometimes I like it. I don't want it right now. Don't want it. I got I got shit going on that I wanna be awake for. If you know you know. The one singular person who knows. If you know you know. Uh so it sucks. Man, it fucking sucks. Just wanna be in control of my fucking life. Can't do shit around here. Can't have shit in Detroit. Can't even have a sleep in Detroit. Can't have shit in Detroit. Outfit change, because I'm no longer awake. It's not what I meant to say. Uh, I like stories that are good. I like it when people tell good, interesting stories. I like it when that happens. Some people don't like that. Some people don't like that. I like... Subtlety. Sometimes. I like both subtlety and extremes, which might be very strange. 
So I could maybe describe my taste in media. I've done this argument a million times on this channel. That I want something to be taken to its logical conclusion, an idea. Like, when I watch anime, let's take a look at three of my, four of my favorite anime. Four of my favorite anime. Hidemaru Sketch, Cyril Summers Lane, Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere, and Take You. Each one of those represents an extremist position on a genre, right? Lane is extreme. Uh, it, it's sort of taking, you know, lots of anime present philosophical ideas or propositions. Lots of anime uh, present uh, maybe a few interesting visuals from time to time. Lots of anime present uh, maybe some focus on characters. Uh, internal worlds conflicting with their external worlds. That's kind of what character is, right? Lane is like the furthest you can take that idea pretty much. I mean, there's other, obviously lots of other anime that do similar things. Go Senzo Sama Bam Banzai, Fully uh, uh, uh the, the Adolescence of Utena. You know, a lot. there are other anime that do similar things. Lane is personally my favorite. But the, the point is, there are anime like, I don't know, um, Saikano, which do it a, a very, very little bit, right? So it's like Sai kind of does have some aspect of um, a little bit of philosophy in there. Very, very minor. Like character, when I say philosophy, like a character's personal philosophy or ideology and studying that, seeing how it, how it affects their perception of the world and how, what, the, what the consequences of that are, stuff like that, right? I, that's like a, a barely a bit of that show, Lane, that's all the show is about. Okay. Uh, Hinamari Sketch. There are many anime that have slice of life elements, uh, that have cute girls in them, that have um, interactions between friend groups, right? But uh, Hinamari Sketch is a show, again, there are many, many others like it, Lucky Star, K, on blah, 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 but Hinamari Sketch is my favorite, that um, only focuses on that. It only has characters, there's no plot, it only has characters, friends, interacting, cute girls. That's all the show is. And nothing else. It's not like I don't know uh, uh, an isekai with cute girls. Like it's an isekai. It's a there's cute girls and they have sort of slice of lifey comedy moments. But also we have to go defeat the demon lord and whatever. Like no, none of that. They just hang out. They just hang out and that's it. Right. The, uh, take you. <coughs> take you. There are lots of anime with comedy in them. Hidemaru Sketch even has comedy in it. Lots of comedy anime or anime which have comedy elements. Take you is. Just jokes, nothing else. It's just joke, 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 joke. That's the entire show. Every second there's a new joke. It's just firing as many jokes at you as fast as possible for nine seasons. And, uh, yeah, doesn't do anything else. Okay, there's like a tiny bit of slice of life stuff in there. There's no plot. You could argue there's a tiny bit of slice of life stuff in there, but it's mostly, almost entirely just jokes. Um, and then Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere. Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere is just plot and world building and nothing else. There is no characters. The characters um, have uh, either incredibly basic or just cookie cutter or inco- inconsequential motivations that you're just told about. Um, you know, the, like, it's, it's not a deep character study. I'll say that much. Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere is not a deep character study like, uh, I don't know, Lane is or something like that. Or Hidemaru Sketch is, by the time you finish watching Hidemaru Sketch, you feel like you really know and understand and almost like you've created a friendship or connection with you know and the gang right not the case in horizon you there are there are 50 characters and um they're all completely batshit insane they have like one car each of them have one character trait uh but that none of that matters because the show is all about throwing as much plot at you as possible as much weird interesting world building at you as possible as much interesting fights and powers and stuff as possible and weird fucking wacky concepts for the most extreme light novel concepts possible. It's all about just law and plot and <clears throat> nonsense and political intrigue and stuff, right? Like like all the stuff that you want, that most light novel adaptations have, right? Like um, to, uh, a show that's kind of like one step down from Horizon might be uh, in- Index Railgun, right? Index Railgun has wacky powers. It has political factions and conflict. It has uh, world building and stuff like that. But it also has a lot of comedy and it has some slice of life and uh, tries and fails to do cute girls and uh, 
stuff like that. And the powers are sort of like kind of interesting. Like they're kind of unique and interesting, but they're not like that weird. Like they're they're cool, but they're not that cool. There's cool concepts, but not as cool or crazy as like the the anything any one minor character from Horizons weird powers. Um or motivations. Like there's a city where science is like everything and everyone's and has like magical powers but they're not actually magic they're like esp but magic also exists in the world um and no one knows that magic is real even though everyone knows that these like science powers are real um it's very confusing it's not actually very confusing it's very simple uh i don't know why i said that uh like the, oh and, and they interact with each other in the two factions and um and there's this character, Aoi Toma, who's like, oh, he has a left hand that can just punch everything and defeat all magic or whatever. Right? Like, that's kind of some cool shit. Like, I, I'm down with that. I like that. I like that. But that's not as cool as humanity once ascended to the stars, failed, got sent back to Earth, and decided the only way to get back to ascending to the stars is to in, exactly reenact history up to the point where they had enough power and technological advancement to get there so they follow this magical book called the testament which tells them exactly what to do <clears throat> then they come up with a loophole to get around the laws of the testament where they can have governments be technically called schools so that the government government can reenact history while the schools can do actually political stuff um and also uh, then japan then there was the harmonic reunification collapse and oh, the, I didn't even mention the harmonic divine states. The harmonic divine states, there's the harmonic reunification collapse. Then Musashi, Musashi is uh, an airship which you only fly on the borders of countries and they go around trading and their, their political position puts them at a disadvantage because uh, people blame them for the collapse during the Namboku Chol period uh, of testament reenactment. And um, now Aoi Toma is, um, and so on. And that's the first episode, right? <clears throat> Like the, I like that. Take it to the extreme. Take it to the extreme. So how can I like that? But also, I like subtlety. Because Horizon is not a subtle show. I like subtlety and I like nuance. Something can't be both obvious and subtle at the same time. Or obvious and nuanced at the same time. Something can't be obvious and nuanced at the same time. Take morality. You can't have a character who has an obvious morality and also a nuanced morality. But it can be obviously nuanced, but the actual content of their morality can't be obvious if it's nuanced, right? An obvious morality might be black and white, good and bad, right? Like, uh, this character is the good guy, this character is the bad guy. It's very obvious this character is the good guy, it's very obvious this character is the bad guy. Right, that's a very obvious morality. If you wanted to create a nuanced morality, like this character has a set of principles and an ideology, um, now let's examine that ideology's impact on the world. And let's, let's, let's examine, like, maybe in this situation, their ideology causes them to do something which we might consider, or the show might consider, uh, morally good. But maybe in another situation, that same ideological principle causes them to act in maybe commit a violent act in defense defense of their particular beliefs or something like that now you have to think as an audience member you're treated with respect you're treated as if you have intelligence it's left up to you like what do you, do you like that's an in, now you have now you have interesting ideas in your head you're thinking like hmm what would the consequences of that particular morality be like hmm like maybe morality is more deep than just good and bad like maybe maybe the villain of this show actually has a, a fairly decent point or maybe it's like star trek right like there there's like uh i don't know like the klingons right the klingons aren't really villains but uh, in the in tng they're not really villains but they're also not really like good guys it's like the, the federation and the klingons have a tenuous political relationship that you have to understand as you watch the show and the klingons have a particular culture uh like how much can you comment on the morality of an in individual in a culture which is so separated from human culture and uh uh like how could like if if something is more like 
does Klingon morality apply to human? Like, because we're humans, we're judging the Klingons by human morality, but they have a completely different system. Like, they have this whole honor system that they very, like, and so on. Like, that's nuanced and interesting, but it's not obvious. You can't point to the Klingons and be like, that's their obvious morality. You can't do it, because firstly, uh, although the, every sci-fi show was, has, or fantasy, which has races as a system, uh, does in some aspect generalize morality across races to an unrealistic extent or traits across races to an unrealistic extent just for simplicity of writing's sake and because races are generally a metaphor for humanity different aspects of human uh consciousness um so they generally like generalize over generalize right like all dwarves love mining and crafting they love all dwarves love minecraft right like you couldn't say that about another... Like, all humans love... Cook, uh, I don't know. I was going to say cooking. Not all humans love cooking, you know? <clears throat> it's same sort of, It doesn't matter. But even Star Trek does this pretty well, because there are Klingons who disagree. There's, like, Worf, who's, like, a whole situation. There's, like, a whole bunch of Klingons who have... There's different factions within the Klingon Empire who have different beliefs. It's all great. I love Star Trek. Uh, like, I love that nuanced shit. But also, Star Trek takes it to the logical extreme. It's not worried about, like... Are people going to be able to take Klingon seriously? They're wacky guys and make like fuck you. It's a sci-fi show, right? Like Star Trek takes everything to its logical extreme, right? If it's going to do, I mean, you could get more political and stuff like that, but maybe not in a TV show, like not in a prime, well, not prime time, but not in like a network TV show. You couldn't really get more bogged down in politics and tactics and. Uh, factions and ideology and philosophy and stuff than Star Trek does. Like, you can't really go much further than that uh, in the medium of network television because, uh, you know, just due to due to economic factors and et cetera, et cetera. Maybe if, uh, in the books, in the Star Trek books, which I haven't read, there's much more information about that sort of stuff. <clears throat> what I'm saying is I like extremes, and subtlety at the same time. Extreme extremity doesn't mean you lose subtlety necessarily. It can, and sometimes that's a good thing. Not everything has to be subtle and nuanced. There's no hard and fast rules for writing a good story. If you can pull it off, if, you, if it's appropriate for the narrative you're telling, and this, then it works. And if it works, it works. Right? If it's not it's it's about telling using the right tools for what you're you're doing, but I would I would rather have something that doesn't fucking half ass it. I would rather have something that doesn't half ass it. I would rather have something that takes whatever it's doing and th- thinks through the actual consequences of what would happen. It doesn't just be like, well, we can't go too far in that direction. Oh, well, gotcha, you sir, right? You can't go too far in the literally nothing ever fucking happens. They just sit around doing nothing. Like, people say that about K-On. K-On is, like, one of the most... Ex- it, it's probably the most accessible slice of life show because there is a big narrative arc through the entire show. The, there is, like, characters do stuff to pertain to that narrative arc. Um, like, yeah, they drink, they sit around drinking tea. Like, that's the meme. But compare K-On to Gotchiusa or compare K-On to Hidamari Sketch or compare K on to the first three episodes of Lucky Star, uh, there's a big fucking difference. And this isn't to say K on is worse, because it's trying to do a different thing. Uh, although, I, I, yeah, I love K on. Uh, in fact, my, prob- like, my problem with K on is the same, my same problem with the later episodes of Lucky Star, which is that sometimes it does. And I don't have a problem. I don't know why I'm saying I have a problem with that. I love, I love Lucky Star and I love K on. But no, they're not my favorites on the same level as Hidamari Sketch because they are trying to do multiple things. I'm, I, I like the the, uh, the the Unix philosophy, right? Do one thing very well instead of trying to do lots of different things. Now, Ken and Lucky Star, they are fairly focused, but not as focused as Gotchiusa or Hidamari Sketch. Now, Gotchiusa isn't as good as k on or Lucky Star, but it is more focused. Um, the main reason Gotchiusa is not as good is because com- uh, Gotchiusa is a bit more comedy-focused than 
these other slice of life shows, but it's also less funny than the other slice of life shows. So there's not really that much to latch on to. Although I do like Gotcha Yusa quite a lot. It's not high, as high up as K and Lucky Star are to me. And to me, the first episode of Lucky Star is basically the best thing ever made. It's like a cinematic masterpiece, I think. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, I don't know what this was about. So I'm, I'm watching this YouTube video by a YouTube channel, Half as Interesting, um, about, about polyphasic sleep cycles. I've, I've known about polyphasic sleep cycles for many, many, many years. Back, I think I finally found out about them in like 2014. I was interested in doing one, but couldn't because I had to go to school, so I couldn't have a do a, do the the any any interesting polyphasic sleep cycle. Uh, but I've been interested in them for a while, and I thought this has reminded me of them. And I realized if I wanted to do one, like my lifestyle as it is now is basically the best it's going to get, the best opportunity I'm going to get to try it out. Um, but then I have the problem of the point of why people do polyphasic sleep cycles most of the time is that they have to sleep less, right? The point the point of doing the, I think it's called like the, the Ubermensch or something, the Ubermensch sleep cycle where you just sleep like 15 minutes every one and a half hours or something like that. You bet you end up sleeping like three hours through the whole day and supposedly you're all rested. I find that kind of sus, but whatever. Uh, I, I, I think I've gone that schedule completely wrong, but doesn't matter. Uh, the point is that they they want more time in the day, uh, but firstly, all time is not created equal. Um, if if uh, lot lots of the things you one would do with their time is stuff that requires other people, you know, other people being awake. In fact, almost the most important thing about a sleep cycle to increase productivity is that it is the one that everyone uses, right? Like if you're I don't know a, a a banker who trades with China all the time. You might live in the U.S., but keep a sleep cycle that matches the time in China because you need to be awake to talk to all the Chinese. You know what I mean? Like if you're trying to do a productivity-based sleep cycle, everyone needs to communicate with other people. I mean, even even me, even base no thank you, who job requires sitting in front of a computer and playing bass guitar. I... I uh, you know, I want to talk to other people, but none of that matters because really the the point is, right, they all want to increase their time awake with some sort of magic body hack, right? Uh, but I don't need that. <laughs> like, I don't want to increase my time awake. Um, I don't have any need for more time awake, really. Sometimes I wish, there's times when I wish, like, oh, I don't want to have to go to sleep now. And so do you know what I do? I just don't go to sleep. I just stay awake until I until I need until I, you know, I just stay awake. <laughs> but that's that's like a rare thing. It's like, oh, I'm watching this really good show and I don't want to go to sleep now. But then I just don't do it. Or like, oh, I, I I've gone really into reading this book, something like that. Like, or making something. Like I can just do that. I don't need more hours in the day every day. Some some days I've got fuck all to do and I want less hours in the day. Um, but anyway. None of that's relevant to what this segment is actually about. The segment is actually about how in the video he mentions this. He's like, oh, and there's actually studies to back this up, right? And then this is, this is it. Uh, I will now play you the clip. He rounded up seven men because while we're had heroically remembered that light bulbs exist, he had unfortunately forgotten that women also exist, and forced them to experience darkness for 14 hours each day for one month. Over time, the experimental subjects settled into a distinct pattern. They would go to sleep for about four hours, wake up for one to three hours, and then go back to sleep for another four hours. Sound familiar? Yeah. Okay. Now, excuse me, Mr. Harper's interesting, but the biggest problem with this study is not the fact that there were no women involved. The biggest problem is that there's seven fucking people. Now, I'm no scientist, but I know what sample size means. I know the value it has, and I don't know whether or not, <laughs> like, I know it's hard to get large sample sizes for sleep research. This is true. This is understandable. I know why they, like, it's probably fairly difficult to get more than seven people on a university campus to agree to do nothing for a week except be locked in a dark room. Like, that's probably a fairly difficult ask to get people to do. 
I accept the, the practical reasons why you've had to have such a small sample size, but then you can't also expect me, now, as I'm sure the writers of the study admit to this, but because, like, you know, it tends to be that scientists and researchers, they have to admit the flaws in their own research. Part of the, the whole thing of writing a paper is doing that. It's a, kind of a big deal. Uh, the one phrase you'll hear throughout all of science and academia in general is further research is needed. They just say that all the fucking time. Um, I think it's fair to say that you can't draw very many conclusions from a study that only looked at seven people in one very specific situation. I need to read the study. I, I wonder if he links his sources. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm going to look in the description of the video. Because that's something that you can do. Um, da -da 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 Shut up. Uh, no, no sources in the description. Maybe the descriptive. The, the, maybe it's on Reddit, on a subreddit. Um, is it this? Is this the? No, this. See this. I don't think this is the right one. Okay. Oh, this is it. This is this is the pa there was the, the paper I was looking for. The one was on on the screen the whole time that I could see the title of. In short photo periods, human sleep is biphasic. It's called that by Thomas A. Ware. Let's go look this up on Google Scholar. Here, I can put you down. You're a tripod. You're a tripod now. You're a tripod now, and I'm going to put you down so I can check with efficacy. Um, let's see. This is me doing my own research. This is what I spend my days on. Uh, in short photo period, human sleep is by Facebook. Cited by 124. Okay. This is the right one, by the way. Thomas A. Weir. A Weir. I don't know how you pronounce that. But um, this is the correct one. Can I get it in a PDF, maybe? Um... Uh, or is this just the abstract? No, this is this is the entire thing. Uh, results of a photo period experiment showed that human sleep can be unconsolidated and polyphasic. See, just can be. That's that's a very different fucking conclusion to what the video does. I hate science YouTubers so much when they do shit like this because it's like, oh, got to got to mention a study, but only mention it very briefly. No, tell me about the fucking study. Uh, that's the summary. Many different kinds of animals sleep activity are polyphasic. I'm, I'm going to pause, read, read this entire paper, and come back to you. Right, already I found a massive problem with this fucking experimental method that is extremely sus. Okay. I exposed to the blah, blah, blah. Basically, they're allowed to wander around for most of the day. But then... Uh, let's just do they were confined to a totally dark bedroom for 14 hours per night. No activities such as listening to music or exercising were permitted in the dark room. Instead, the individuals were encouraged to rest and sleep. So no wonder they're sleeping more than regular people because they're fucking locked in a dark room for 14 hours with nothing to do except for fucking sleep. What the fuck is this? Okay, I, I, I read most of the paper. Oh, no, my sunglasses, my sunglasses. I've read most of the paper, I'm going to be honest, a lot of it went over my head because it's specific stuff about sleep science and certain brain patterns that are observed during sleep that is specialist knowledge that I don't have, so uh, I kind of skimmed that bit. Now, it seems like legitimate, right? Like, I'm not trying to claim, I just want to be clear here, I'm not trying to claim that this study is bullshit. I, I know, I, again, I just want to make sure you know I'm cool. Just so you know I'm cool. I knew all of this before watching the, the, the YouTube video that um, in the medieval period uh, and uh, Greek, ancient Greek, like oh, ancient writings from before the Industrial Revolution uh, in Europe that I've heard of have talked about how people had a first and second sleep. They'd get up in the middle of the night and have sex with each other. Uh, that's basically what they would do. Uh, uh, no one really knows what they did that much. They might eat a snack have a snack and fuck. That's basically what they would do. They would sleep for like four hours, wake up, fuck, eat, have a snack, go back to sleep. Uh, in medieval Europe and in like ancient Greece and I don't know, other places as well. I've, I haven't heard of this from outside of Europe, 
uh, in the video, he says something about China and the Middle East, but he talks about them with, with regards to midday naps, not this biphasic sleep cycle, which makes me think maybe it's a cultural thing, because right now, like, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I literally don't know enough about, the, like, there's, maybe there's just not enough writing that I've read about anyone who knows more about places outside of Europe, please inform me. Uh, but yeah, I think the study is fairly accurate. The, the data is fairly obvious. Um, however, I do have some... Wait, I need to check. It, it says um, when the subjects were... Like, basically, there was, there was a, they were locked in a dark room, right? But it doesn't say... They were, it just says they were confined to a totally dark bedroom for a certain hours of night. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, details about the methods have been reported elsewhere. All right, I'm going to try and find the details about the method. Hold on, be right back. But, okay, before I be right back, I still think this is a fairly legitimate study. I still think biphasic sleep in humans is is fairly, like, maybe true. I don't know. I just, I just want to know more about the fucking methods. I can't find that further details anywhere, um, but after looking at some of his other work, again, as I said before, I think he seems to be a fairly legit researcher. He's done a lot of research into seasonal affective disorder, the effects of sleep deprivation and sleep quality on depression and other mental health disorders, and a bunch of interesting stuff. I didn't read it, any of those articles, but there's interesting abstracts and titles and stuff. So, you know, shout out to T.A. Thomas Ware uh, seems to know his shit. However, doesn't mean this study is uh, conclusive. And I don't think he would argue that it's conclusive either because he seems like a legit researcher, legit enough to know that a sample size of seven is uh, not enough to draw any conclusions from. This doesn't mean the conclusion is not correct. This is how science works. I still think that it's true that humans may, without artificial light, have naturally a biphasic sleep cycle. That seems fair enough to me. However, you, uh, this, this uh, experiment does not actually verify that, that fact. It's not proof of that fact. It might have evidence to prove it, as in it might be evidence in support of that fact, but it's not conclusive evidence. This is the stuff that science education never fucking talks about. When they say there was a study that showed that this they kind of imply that if a study showed this, that means that the conclusion is correct because he's trying to argue a conclusion. You never get the actual intricacies of how fucking science works. And that's what's fucked, is that it's all there for free on the internet. I didn't have to go to the news. I didn't even have to sci-hub that. I didn't have to sci-hub it. I didn't even have to do any of that. I was on fucking Google Scholar, the PDF, for free, without any problems. Anyone could read that article or paper. Like, this is the, like, I, f I feel like science educators are doing a disservice to the public by not encouraging them to read the original sources ever. I don't think I've ever heard of, a, 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 like, very occasionally you hear a science YouTuber or an educator or something say, like, and the sources for that paper are in the description, but which I suppose is good. Like, that's basically encouraging someone to read it. But it would be good if they said, the sources are in the description, and I highly recommend you read the original paper because this is just a summary video for entertainment or something like that, like to make it clear what, what is actually going on here. Or like, I don't know, because they're always trying to argue a point, which is not, like, I feel like it's not a very good way to teach how the scientific method works. I mean, sure, scientists and researchers and academics are also trying to argue a point, but like, in theory at least, the way science should work is that you have a hypothesis and then you try and prove yourself wrong. And if you can, only if you can't prove yourself wrong, then you say, I might be right, but further research is still needed. That's how it should work, right? Uh, that's not how, like, most of these videos work. Most of these videos work by telling you the conclusion up front, humans have a biphasic sleep cycle, and then presenting a bunch of basically cherry-picked evidence, because it's just curated by whoever wrote the video, with no counter-arguments from the other side because uh, there's always counter-arguments even on very obvious shit there's always counter-arguments even on stuff that is like almost certainly true there's always this one guy who's like but wouldn't it be so cool if that wasn't true 
uh, and uh, that's how it works. Like you never get that in these fucking science education videos. You just get here's my argument, and then a bunch of cherry picked sources and stuff, and then uh, they're all always summarized, like very quickly summarized in, in a short segment where they say these are the results. Like, this person took a group of people and put them very briefly, right? And there's a, obviously a reason for that, which is that um, you know while I was reading that paper, I I was you know, if that is a paper written for people who are already in the field, um, which is how academia works. Like when I wrote my paper on Lane, I didn't explain what anime is. <laughs> I didn't have to. I didn't have to explain. You know, like that's the point. The point is that it's you don't have to do any of that dumb shit because it's for people who already know what's going on. But I feel better having read it because I wasn't treated like an idiot because it was written for people who who are assumed to already be smart, and I know that I'm not smart enough to understand all that stuff. I'm not saying everyone should read every academic paper because they won't understand it, is the point. I am, I'm not saying that science education should just be um, blandly reading out papers that have already been written by other people. What I'm saying is that science education often misses the, um, the, the weird gray area that makes up most of science, most of all research in academia. The, the weird gray area of this is probably true but we don't have conclusive evidence yet. Or the weird gray area of like, this study does seem promising, but it's not conclusive. Like stuff like that, or like, um, like, here's my opinion, but make sure you go read the original article and do your own research. Like drug YouTubers are really good at this. Um, lawyers are really good at this because they are legally required to do it. Um, but, um, like the scientists, physicists, all these chemists, these lot, lot the, the 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 actual people who are doing the research are good at it, but the YouTubers aren't good at it. They almost never say, and now go go on fucking JSTOR and read the original paper to come to your own conclusions. Don't just believe me. They're always trying to prove a point, and that's really annoying. Uh, but I will not stop watching half as interesting videos because they're half as interesting as regular videos, but that's still kind of interesting my biggest flaw as a human being is that I can't stick to things for longer than a couple of weeks let's say um, I just get bored of things and I uh, lose motivation after a couple of weeks pretty much everything if it lasts longer than like two weeks if I stay interested in something for longer than two weeks Chances are I'll be interested in that thing for at least five years. There's no middle ground. There's no like, oh yeah, I could do this for a couple months maybe. Something like, I don't know. Or I, like, I don't know. Like, doing things for a long time is hard. Uh, making decisions. And e even when it's stuff that I don't not enjoy, when something just goes on for too long, I get bored of it and I stop doing it or my mind wanders to other places and I move on because I feel like I'm a new person by then. Uh, one example of this, very obvious, or one more pertinent example of this is with weight loss that I struggled, I mean, I struggled to stick with diets for, for a reasonable amount of time. But I don't think that's particularly unusual. I think everyone finds that difficult. But maybe something more apparent might be visual novels. So Magikoi, for example, as I, I was the last visual novel I read, and um, I actually never finished it. I I finished the main four character routes in Magikoi, and I never finished the rest of the visual novel, including the canonical like true route, which is though well, actually it's not the canonical true route. There is no con. It's the the, the like story, the story route. There's there's a there's a there's a bunch of routes in Magikoi. There's the four main heroines, then there's some side routes of of side characters, and then there's those ones are supposedly shorter. That's when I got bored because I was like, whatever, you know, side characters, whatever. And then there's the final route, but then there's another route where you just if you just don't choose any of the characters, if you just like then you have a route which is like kind of a, a joke route where nothing much happens and then there's another fight there's another route 
which is like the 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 one where the all the plot intrigue that is set up in all the other routes is supposedly takes place like that's the real meat of the story i guess according to what i've read never read it never played that route I had to admit to myself after a while that I was just never going to finish Magikor. And it's not because Magikor is bad, but I don't think it's as good as I thought it was at first. Like, after playing two routes, I was like, this is great. But after playing four routes, I was like, I'm now like, eh, is it great, though? But more importantly, it's so long. It's long as fuck, and it's not like particular to me engaging enough that I can just read it for long stretches of time so taking ages to finish and because it took a long time eventually I just stopped reading it even though it wasn't I wasn't thought that it was bad but um I think I described it as like when I saw Magikoi first on VNDB I was like samurai girls it's gonna be like it's gonna be like a fight, like like focused on big fight scenes and like narrative arcs and tournament arcs and stuff like that. I don't know if I want it. I don't know if I'm. That's that's not really my thing. But then I'm like, oh, you start reading it, and actually it's like a slice of life, and the samurai girl stuff is like a takes a back seat. You know, it's not it's not like shonen battles and stuff. It's like slice of life stuff. Oh, then then twenty hours in. You're like, oh, actually, I was double wrong. Every every route has a big climactic shonen battle scene, and uh, yeah, it's really boring to me. But it, it's not like that boring. Like they're fine. They're not like bad. They're like they're fine. Um, and it does other stuff good. It just takes so long that it's like, unless something's amazing. I'm not going to stick with it for that long. Um, so, yeah. Vision novels are difficult for me. Because I can't stick to things. I I was recently reading Princess Evangel. Um, because... Did I already talk about this in a video? I don't know. Reading Princess Evangel because I liked Magical Marriage Lunatics and it's made by the same company and so I thought I'll read Princess Evangel it has a good rating uh, no it's dog shit it's not good I know why people like it the girls are shit tier shit tier girls bland and I mean I can see how someone might find the setting interesting but I don't um, the plot like I uh the plot of Princess Evangel this is like a ticking clock. It's not really a plot. It's more like there is a ticking clock narrative, which is this guy has to get enough votes to be allowed to stay in the school, basically. And he has to make friends with as many, enough people and have a good enough reputation that he can get voted and majority of the votes will let him stay in the school. That's like the plot, basically. That's where the tension comes from. It's like, oh, narrative arc. You have until the end of the first term to get on enough people's good side that they'll vote for you to let you stay in the school. Like, that's the narrative art. And, like, sure, it, 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 I don't know, it's not very interesting to me. Like, there's not a particularly interesting way to create tension, especially because seemingly arbitrary things just happen. Like, a lot of it is not necessarily in the main character's control. Some of it is. But, um... You know, it's it's a, it's just not that interesting to me, and the way it's executed is not like it might be interesting if it was been done like as sort of a, a maybe a, a some sort of tongue-in-cheek portrayal of of politics, where it was like, oh, okay, I need to get enough votes to stay in the school, and then it devolves into like a House of Cards political drama of him like manipulating everyone at the school to vote for him through, like, s s underhanded tactics and, and stuff. Like, that would be fucking sick, actually. I would hella read that. But that's not what it is. He, he gets the votes by just being a good person. Oh, I'm such a good person. 
It's the easiest thing in the world to write. A character with no motivations, no fucking nuance, just ooh, always does the right thing. Isn't that great? But mostly, I mean, none of that really matters. The biggest deal is that the girls are shit. There's nothing interesting. Like, generic, 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 bad, boring. Bland, flavorless, textureless, boring character designs, non-appealing. Just nothing. Just nothing good. There was no part of me that was like, oh, I want to see what... The, I, I've, I've, I'm, I haven't finished the common route. I think, I've, I think I'm probably like maybe two-thirds of the way through the common route. Uh, that would be a guess, just based on how much time I've spent reading it. I don't know how long... I, I might be nowhere near two-thirds. I don't know how long the routes work in this game. I might be way less than that, I don't know. But, um, like, I've spent time with all these characters, and I, I haven't had that moment where I feel, where I felt, which is like an often thing you feel in, when playing the common route of vision novel, is when you, you feel like, oh, I, I wonder what this character's route's going to be like, oh, I'm really, I really want to go down, I really want to, I'm curious to see what this character's route's like, really want to see at the end of this relationship and the conclusion, no, I didn't feel that at all, not once, they, they're, they're all completely uninteresting, it was just like, oh, dreading, like, oh, am I going to have to read fucking 10 hours of this character? And at that point, I think you should just drop it. I think that's the best bet. So I think I'm just going to drop that. Um, haven't found a good visual novel for a while. It's kind of demotivating. Haven't found a good anime for a while. I mean, I did like, my 20, 2021 summer anime breakdown, but I haven't actually... I, bet, I mean, I've kept watching a couple of them, but I'm, I think I might just be losing interest in anime and stuff. Which is fine, but it just leaves me with one less thing to do to kill time in my life. Uh, yeah, I got fuck all to do with my life. <laughs> um, no, but, but more importantly, uh, yeah, it's just weird. I don't know. I, I haven't been particularly interested in anime. I haven't found anything I particularly want to watch. Um, so yeah, hope you hope you can't see what I'm looking at in my my, my sunglasses. Hope you didn't, hope you didn't get catch a whiff of that. That'll get me banned off of YouTube. Ponto. That'll get me banned off of YouTube. Ponto. I'm researching visual novels. Okay, they're ero gay. They're again. There's gonna be there's gonna be ero in the, in them. Can't show that on YouTube. Cannot show that on YouTube. Looking for something good to fucking read. Could just read a book. Got books. <sighs> this is kind of buying power though, and I don't have any of that right now to spare. Maybe, maybe later I'll have some brain power to spare. Brain power. <laughs> Um, yeah. I've been noticing this worrying trend. Welcome back to The Worrying Trend, my new show, The Worrying Trend. And I've been noticing this worrying trend. And this worrying trend is that artists can't just be artists anymore. And I'm pretty sure the concept of an artist who just makes art is uh, it's going to die within well, fairly soon. And uh, what I mean by that is... Uh, Okay, well, also, there's another thing, which is that have artists ever been able to just be artists? Is that just, like, a meme? Like, did it ever exist? Like, if you think about, like, a pure artist, you might think of, like, I don't know, in my head, like, who's a, who's a pure artist? Maybe, like, Michelangelo and, like, you know, those uh, Renaissance artists, right? But they weren't really pure artists. Like, th how did Michelangelo get the opportunity to paint or make statues. Well, they had patrons, right? Not Patreon supporters, but patrons. They had uh, wealthy men and families. The Medici family, I believe. The Medici family, uh, in particular for Michelangelo. Uh, they had wealthy families who would patronize them, give them money 
to make their art, to give them the space, give them the opportunity to make their art, um, for various reasons, basically to do with the, the politics of these aristocratic families. Um, uh, so, like, you hear about this, but then I'm thinking, like, okay, so how does how does one get to be Michelangelo in that situation? Like, you, you're an artist, you're a painter, you're a sculptor, you want to make money, you have to start spending a lot of your time sort of hanging around with these rich families, how, trying to get in their good graces and stuff. Like, you can't just walk up to them and be like, hey, pay me to make this thing. Like, you need to to sort of sell yourself and advertise yourself. And maybe that's always been a part of being an artist, you know? Like, like uh, you can't just, if you're an author, if you, if you write books, you, you know, writing books is, is a part of your job. It's what you pretend your job is. But your real job is, you know, most of your time is spent, like, fucking fiddling with publishers, like, trying to chase after publishing deals, having fucking calls and meetings and shit, and, be, you know, trying to find a publisher who will publish you, talking with your editor, blah, 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 blah. There's a whole bunch of shit that goes on uh, behind the scenes just to be able to actually do your fucking art. And this is really annoying. So, you know, maybe this is not a new thing, is what I'm saying. But I feel like it's maybe getting worse because of social media, that all artists have to be social media influencers sort of primarily. Because you've got people like, oh, there's a million of them these days, KSI, Dream, PewDiePie, a million of them, who are like, their social media personalities primarily, and then they go on to make music, and they just have an instant music career without having to try. You know, Dream's music is fucking awful. So all of their music is fucking awful. Everyone kind of knows it's fucking awful, but they get loads of, they basically have an instant music career because they have this pre-established fan base which they get from social media. You almost never see the reverse. The only, type, the only thing I can think of, someone who's actually done the reverse, is T-Pain, who has sort of become a Twitch streamer recently. But he's not even a very big Twitch streamer. Like, it's, he's definitely doing it out of passion, I would say, rather than for a career move. I mean, it's a career move, but he's cool, by the way. Check out T-Pain's stream. Great, great, great entertainer he is. Very entertaining stream. Uh, but it's rare to see people go the other way. But people will take whatever influence they have and turn it into a music career. Um, the, the biggest one is Joji. The biggest one is probably Frank, right? Uh, he, he really went all in on that. Despite the fact that his music shit, it didn't matter because he already had the first push. The first push is like the hardest thing to get as an artist. Once you've got momentum, once you've got about 10,000 fans, that's like the rough number, 10,000 fans is generally considered enough to support yourself. Um, not just 10,000 people who have heard your music, but 10,000 fans. Uh, once you have 10,000 fans, you're good. And Philby Frank had like a million subscribers, so just out of the numbers game, it's fairly likely that 10,000 of them are going to like his music enough to, you know, be fans and, and so on. And then bam, he's got a music career, then you can, you know, he, he already got a leg up. But then you have the opposite going, where like, artists, imagine if I'm an artist, you just, I, hard to imagine, I know, but imagine if I made music or something wacky like that. Imagine if I had an album called Dead Form, out now on all platforms, Bandcamp, SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Music, and all of your other favorite streaming platforms out now, Dead Form by No Thank You, the world's greatest punk album ever made. Um, imagine if that was the case. Uh, you, you know, compare me and an identical me, but one of them makes a lot of posts on social media and has like a social media fan base on Twitter or something like that. Uh, or maybe makes actually watchable YouTube videos, like video essays or something, and then at the end of my videos, I'm like, I go listen to my my, my songs or something. Like, that, that's going to be more popular. It's going to be more popular than this. I know some people have found my music through my videos, which is kind of cool, I guess, but I don't, you know, this, the videos don't exist as an advertising platform, so I consider this to be fair game. But there are some people who, like, I don't know, it's not that they don't enjoy it, but, like, they just, because they, I don't know if they're consciously aware of what they're doing, but uh, they're, they're sort of trying to be social media influencers or uh, Twitch streamers or YouTubers first in order to sort of push their music career. Like, um, you have to be everything. You can't just be one thing. You have to be everything. Because if you're not, then you're putting yourself at a disadvantage in the sort of marketplace, uh, which I think is kind of fucked, really. I think it's kind of fucked. Uh, like, there's a there's someone, a, a musician, I, I think they're just called, like, HJKL or something. 
but they make they do like Twitch streams regularly. Um, just basically to promote their music. I'm sure they enjoy themselves on their Twitch streams and they have a or I haven't actually watched any of them. I'm sure they're good fun and whatever. I'm not saying this is like a cynical or bad thing to do or a sell out thing to do. I'm just saying that that's the way that the end that's the way that things happen these days. You have to do everything. You can't just do one thing. You have to do everything. You have to be like, what if I'm fucking good at making music but I don't know how to talk to people? Like, I, I don't know how to fucking, I don't know, book gigs or something. And I don't have enough money to hire an agent. What if that was crazily the case? Unimaginable, but that's basically, you know, that's, okay, fuck, fuck the, the meme. That's just the, the situation that I'm in. Like, I'm, I'm decent at making music and uh, whatever. I have no idea how to fucking book gigs for myself. I'm too nervous to talk to people on the phone. I have anxiety. I have fucking agoraphobia or whatever. Uh, so I, I find that really hard. Uh, and I don't know how to get an agent, I don't know how to do any of this stuff, no one ever told me, I don't know how to get my royalties, I don't know how to deal with labels, I don't know how to do any of this shit, uh, you know, I don't regularly deal with labels, but it's sometimes the thing that you have to, you have to do as a musician, uh, I don't know how to do any of that stuff, I have to sort of figure it out myself, barely get any time left to make fucking music, I'm not a graphic designer, I have to do all the graphic design for my albums and shit, like, I, I got lucky, I got lucky with Dead Form, that I was fucking around with Gimp randomly, and ended up stumbling across something that looked cool, uh, you know, I got lucky with the no thank you sigil, but that looks cool, right? It was literally just luck. I'm not a fucking graphic designer. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but you can't just be one thing. You have to be everything. Uh, until you're already successful, then once you're already successful, you can be the one thing, right? Once you're already successful, you can just be like, okay, I'm going to make music now. That's fucking stupid. But there's no way to fix it without destroying capitalism. Oh, and then the other thing is that you can't just be you know, all of those things, you also have to be a landlord, right? You have to be a landlord who defends your intellectual property. You don't actually have to do this. People just think they have to do this because they're fucking stupid. They're fucking stupid. You don't actually have to do this. I don't do it. All my music is free. Take it. It is, it is creative commons. You can do whatever you want with it. I will never copyright strike anyone for using my music. I think copyright is a moral evil, and you can do whatever the fuck you want with my music. And I think anyone who cares about that shit is a stupid idiot. Uh, however... And it does, it does, this loses me no money. All my music is free. You can download it on Bandcamp for free and the highest quality you want. Everything is free. I upload my music to torrent trackers and I encourage people to, you know, torrent my music, do whatever you want. It's like, I don't care. And I think people who do care are idiots. But these idiots, they really care about the copyright and they, they get mad. And it's not actually musicians that are that really... It's, it's, it's artists, it's visual artists that, that get really triggered about this. Did I say triggered in 2021? Well... Wow. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, you know, a lot of visual artists on Twitter and Tumblr, especially, uh, which is where they mostly hang out, uh, are like so. Oh, oh, you traced an artwork. You're fucking. You're fucking Hitler. You're fucking Hitler. You traced my artwork. Like this person can never have a career in art because they traced something. Yeah, fuck you. What? If, so what? I should, I should just start fucking stealing. I should make a new Twitter account. I should just go around and just steal other people's work and just pass it off as my own. And then when they try and come at me, I just say, fuck you. I, I just, I'll, I'll literally steal someone else's work and I'll, 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 I'll steal a bunch of other people. Oh, I'm a genius. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, I'm going to find on Twitter people who have in the past called people out for tracing and stuff like that. And then what I'm going to do, if I take all of their art and I'm, instead, of pop, instead of putting one of them as my own, I'm going to put them all together in a collage and when they say, like, oh, you can't do that, I'm going to be like, oh, so you're against the entire medium of collage then? You think collage is bad? You think? And then I'm going to just point them to the Patricia Taxon videos about copyright. I'm going to say, fuck you. I'm going to, by the way, this is a British, you probably don't know this, this is a British uh, thing. Like, we have this here too, but this is, this is a, a British fuck you. It means, like, up yours. Uh, it's, uh, it comes from the Hundred Years' War with the French, where the British troops, this is the, the legend behind it, at least. I don't know if it's actually true, but this is the, the legend behind it, is that uh, the French had lots of longbowmen, and whenever the British would capture the longbowmen... Oh, no, no, the other way around. The, the French, the British were good longbowmen, and whenever the French would capture the British longbowmen, they'd cut their two fingers off so that they couldn't draw a bow back anymore. And so, uh, to, to sort of tease the French, the longbowmen would go like this, look, we still have our two fingers, you haven't captured us, we're winning, fuck you. Right, and then it became an insult to do that. That's the legend behind it. Anyway, that was a bit of a tangent, uh, but yeah, that's a good, that's a good insult. Uh, specifically, this way around. This way around still means peace and victory or whatever the fuck. I don't think it actually, whatever. But yeah, this way around. British insults. Come to Britain, do this to someone. Say up yours. They'll love it. They'll love you.
uh, this one as well. I've never seen Americans do that. Uh, sometimes they do, but you, you know, you, this is wanker. It's kind of more of a British thing. You don't see Americans do that very often. Americans have shit fucking swear word hand gestures. There's also this one. So this isn't really a, this is more of a, of a, of a, of a like in other places in the world. So like, uh, like that or whatever. It's like that, right? I, I think. What is it? Like, it's like that? What is it? Like that? I, I don't remember. But that's a cool one. I've always liked that one. Uh, but yeah. What are we talking about? Oh yeah, copyright's bad. Landlords are bad. If you're an intellectual prop, if you're a landlord of your own intellectual property, uh, I will kill you. I will eat you. I will eat you in in my mouth, and then you will be eaten. Uh, so yeah, there, there's a lot of things. I don't know. It's all fucked. It's all fucked. Everything's fucked. Can't be an artist. Art's shit. Don't fucking do art. It's terrible. We need to abolish art. Um. We need to abolish it. Ah, this is not a meme. I genuinely believe this. Uh, let me just intake all my chemicals. What am I doing? I don't know. Making a video. What do you think about this? What do you think about this, eh? What do you think about this video, eh? Think about this. Because this is because of the government pills. All my fucking shirts are fucked. That's why I started wearing. Well, one of the reasons why I started wearing these things, the the, the Hawaiian shirts, because for some I don't chew them because they have like a the buttons there, so it's not good to chew. That's, that's one of the reasons I like the Hawaiian shirts, and also that they're, they're made of better material. They don't fall apart when you chew them, unlike this dog shit. Uh, that the, the dark dog phone t-shirt. Can't even wear it outside anymore. However, I want more fucking band t-shirts. I want to buy. All, I'm, I, maybe I should just buy all of my t-shirts again. Cause like I really like this t-shirt before it had a big hole in it and you know showed my tits or whatever. <laughs> it was a good t-shirt. And uh, my 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 no trend t-shirt that says you breed like rats and you're no better. Like that's that's a perfect t-shirt. And I miss my fucking I'm I miss my nuclear war now t-shirt. That was a great t-shirt, but I fucking it was way too ripped up. Um, all my t-shirts are fucked. Like I like I like the Hawaiian shirts. I like the sunglasses. But you can't wear them in winter, first of all. And secondly, you know how is everyone going to know that I'm sad and listen to sad music if I don't wear t-shirts that show the sad music I listen to? Like, r r come on, how is everyone going to know that I listen to good music and that I uh, um that I have m mental health problems? If I don't wear t-shirts that say I, li I listen to good music and I have mental health problems, I'm gonna make a t-shirt. Okay, guys, comment comment down below if you would if you would like this video. Comment and subscribe if you would if you would buy a T-shirt on Teespring.com/slash No Thank You uh, that said I have mental health issues and I listen to good music or something. <laughs> that would be a great T-shirt. Yo, I'm I'm actually making that. I'm really gonna make that right now. Hey, it's done. Uh, here it is. I don't know if you can see that very well. It says uh, I have mental illness. And I listen to good music. I don't know why the there you go, zoom it in. Can you see that well? I can't flip the camera or all of my cool effects will go away. Uh but yeah. It's up out now on um they've changed the fucking name of the website. It's no thank you dot creatorspring dot com. I'll put it in the description if I remember. I probably won't remember, so uh I'm sure you can find it. You're very talented. You're very talented people. I'm sure you can find it if you want if you want a t shirt that says that, I'm sure you can find it. Um impress all of your friends. So the T shirts come in many kinds. There's there's other stuff. I think a sticker. A sticker. I think it'd be good as a sticker. The sticker looks good when I when I saw it. There's a sticker of it. If you want a sticker instead of a T shirt. You know. Sorry, I got I gotta show myself somehow, but I just think that's such a fun funny uh T shirt design. Okay. While we're here complaining about YouTube videos, I figure I might as well complain about Luke Smith's newest video, where he talks about it's called why Linux is getting worse or whatever, something like that. Fucking what's it called? Linux is getting worse for normal people. What it actually is is a rant about Manjaro specifically. Now I use Manjaro, so I'm fairly familiar with it. Although I I do plan on going to Arch eventually. 
um, because there is, you know, Luke Smith has some points in this video, and they're points that I've thought about too. Um, but anyway, none of that's important. The point of the, uh, basically, at least one of the points he makes in the video is is just nonsense, uh, and that point is that that Manjaro has sort of two package managers, in that it has Pac-Man, which is the Arch uh, package manager, because Manjaro is based on Arch, and it also has something called Pamac. Uh, which he describes as an entirely different package manager that is somehow in fucking uh, compatible with Pac-Man and stuff like that. And so, like, oh, if you want to update your software, you have to run two commands or something. None, none of that's true. I don't know what he's talking about. You can't use Pac-Man while you have Pac-Mac open. Why would you ever need to do that? Why would you ever need to have? Why would you ever need to have Pac-Mac open in the first place? It's a gooey wrapper. It's like a gooey wrapper for Pac-Man. And secondly, why would you want to run both at the same time? It's like a, that's such a weird niche use case. Like, why not? Like, it doesn't make any sense. But the main thing is he talks about how they're, like, incompatible with each other. Like, oh, it has these two conflicting package managers. This isn't true. Uh, when, you, when you run Pac-Man SYU or whatever, uh, it updates all your software, whether you downloaded it from the gooey wrap from Pamac or Pac-Man. Like, it, work, it works fine. I don't know what he's talking about. It's a complete non-issue. Sounds like he's had problems on this guy's computer, but uh, that's not a problem. Like, I've never had that problem at all. It seems completely fine. He talks about something about the key ring breaking grub. Uh, the key ring broke once uh, in my Pac-Man, but this is not, something, this is not a Manjaro-specific problem. It's just a Pac-Man problem and I just fixed it. It took a while to fix, but I've, I, after a lot of Googling, I found a Stack Overflow. After a lot of searching through various Stack Overflows, I found a Stack Overflow with the correct solution. Um, and now I know how to fix it if it ever happens in the future. Uh, <clears throat> but, but that's just the Linux thing. Things break. Rolling, it's more of a rolling release thing. Things break, right? Uh, and then he talks about like um, how like somehow it's the Manjaro developers' fault that flat packs and snaps are like popular. Like no. What are you talk yes, okay, it is annoying that Manjaro comes with flat pack and snap pre installed. Like I wouldn't want that. I've never used them. But also I've never understood like I don't see why it's a big deal. But a lot of people complain about them for good reason, they're terrible. But you also never need to use them. I've never used them. I've used Snap once, a long time ago, many, many years ago. I used Snap, Snap once. Uh, I would never do that anymore. If I want to download a program, I go to the program GitHub or whatever Git alternative. I read through. Oftentimes it's in the AUR, which is great. One of the great advantages of Manjaro is that it can use the AUR because it's an arch based distro. If it's in the AUR, I use that. Uh, if it's in the Pac-Man repos, I use that. If it's not, I just git clone the fucking git out. Like, what's the fucking problem? What's the problem? I don't understand. It's not difficult to do. It, like, I, I did this. I literally did this. The, like, I was... It, we, we Cloning a git repo and sudo make install is like the easiest possible thing to do. It takes no... It's not like a skilled task that you need to have intimate knowledge to do, you you go to fucking, like, I was literally doing it when I was, like, 15 or whatever in IT class when we were using Raspberry Pis. I did it. it. Like, it's not fucking hard. What are you talking about? What's he on about? Oh, it's so bad for normal people. Well, if, if normal people don't know how to fucking type sudo make install into their command line, then, then maybe they don't deserve to use computers. Think of, like, what the fuck are you talking about? And if you want a really, really baby, baby's first distro, like a really, I, Manjaro isn't, I know he recommends Manjaro as a beginner distro. I don't necessarily recommend Manjaro as a beginner distro, necessarily. It depends on the context. If it's someone who, if you're recommending a beginner distro to, like, someone who is planning to get into Linux, right, Manjaro is good because it will introduce them to new concepts, like 
you can dive deep, fairly deep into it, right? And you, once you've used Manjaro, you're familiar with basically how Arch works, and you can switch to Arch when you want to. But if you're recommending it to your grandma, for example, uh, no, I wouldn't do Manjaro. I would use Pop OS. Much better distro for that fucking use case. Uh, I don't know what he's on about. But, I mean, I would understand if he said, like, oh, it has two package managers, which is blow. Like, yeah, that's true. It's blow. Like, that's a fair criticism. Uh, I don't know. It's a kind of a terrible video. Back to no thank you's dark ambient lounge. Today we're using NetBSD. I would like to figure out why the BSPWM doesn't work. This is my wallpaper. I have D menu installed. D menu what? I have three different terminals? No, two different terminals. XFC four terminals for some fucking reason. I guess I'm using XFC. And I have X term as well. Which is fairly useless. Um I should have BSPW installed somewhere on the computer. But, um Actually, because NetBSD doesn't use, I'm going to put my glasses away because it's too dark to have glasses. You know what, we're going to stop, we're going to stop this meme of it being dark. We're just going to have the light on. And I'm going to put my glasses away as well. Okay. Um, it has excellent RP. What if I just comment out XSD for session and then restart? Um, uh, not used to this keyboard layout. Oh, the keyboard layout is wrong. It's actually okay. I clearly haven't configured that correctly. I'm going to comment out XSD for session. Oh fuck, okay, I need I should have Uh Okay. I don't know what I've done. Uh okay. Let's let's just uh Yeah, okay, I understand. Why why can't I exit?
I know what's going on. Am I having the can't exit Vim meme? Okay, we're back. I've managed it. I've managed to exit Vim. Okay. Um, pseudo. Oh no, pseudo doesn't exist on. Okay, I have to F U. Then type my. Oh shit, I probably shouldn't have shown that. I don't think you can tell what my password is. Uh. Why am I doing this on camera? I've successfully done something. There's, there's no wallpaper or anything. So XSP didn't, didn't launch. Um. But I don't know how to make fucking BSPWM launch. I don't know where all everything's happening, so I'm gonna find out. Uh oh, guys. I I think I might have broken everything. <laughs> I think I might have broken Star X. Um. I tried to just control C it, which should kill the running process, but apparently that doesn't work. Um, uh, I don't know what to do. Timeout in locking authority. Okay, well, let me, let me fucking stop this process. How do I, how do I stop the, this process from happening? This ain't good. This ain't good at all. Oh. Something's happened. Is this a desktop? What is this? Is this BSPWM? Uh my 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 D menu isn't opening. I'm assuming this is nothing. It just seems to be a black screen. I think I've actually broken Star X. Ah! I think I should... I think the actual solution to fix this problem is to do a fresh install of fucking NetBSD. Do I want to do this today? Do I want to do a fresh NetBSD install? It, it, am I willing to just die? Am I willing to die today? I don't think I'm willing to die. Um, uh, I'm just going to restart the computer and it hope that it fixes itself. Because I realized there's no reason that that BSD couldn't be usable. The main thing that makes this computer unusable is that this trackpad is, is terrible. But that's mainly bad because I'm using software that needs the mouse. But if I had a similar setup as I have on my ThinkPad, I would barely need the mouse. I think, I think I'm, I mean, my prediction is that this is not going to work and I'm going to have to do a fresh install. Uh, in which case, I may as well just use OpenBSD instead or something. Because, uh, you know, reasons. But, uh, I don't know. Kind of cool. Alright, well, I don't know why this is taking fucking forever. Yeah, it's broken. Uh, I have no idea how to fix it. I think the, it's not even worth trying to fix. It would be much faster to just do a fresh install, even though doing a fresh install would be fast. But I think that's the answer here. Do I have a USB anywhere? Oh, I have this. What does this have on it? 
tired of this guy. Let's find out. Alright, you can you can die. We don't need you. Go away. Go away, computer. Alright. Anything on here? No? It's, it's empty? Uh, normally there's a light that comes on. Is it like bug or something? Maybe, maybe it needs the USB 3.0. No, it's just meant, did I format this at some point? I don't know what's going on there. I feel like I have somewhere around here a USB that still has my NetBSD thing on it. Cause like, that, that way I won't have to go through the effort of um, making everything bootable and flashable and smashable and cashable, you know? Uh, can I be bothered to be doing this right now? Okay, I suppose I should do some sort of update. So it's been two days, one day, I don't remember when I last recorded. I shaved, clean shaven thank you, in the building. Um, NetBSD is reinstalled, it's all good. Plus the addition that I actually, this time, prioritized getting BSPWM working because I knew it would be more, use, more usable instead of having to also wrangle with um, fucking XFC WM or whatever the fuck, the default XFC with XFC because it's bullshit. No one wants to use XFC. Uh, however, having the same problem, the same exact problem I had last time, which is that uh, it is difficult to, send up wire, to set up wireless networking on NetBSD. And uh, last time, I did not do a good enough job of documenting what I did to fix this. <laughs> um, I'll just I'll just tell you to, I'll just talk you through what's happened so far. So what happened was I fucked my NetBSD by running start x as root. I believe is what happened. No, no. By by being root. By being root in an instance of X already open, then running start X, and it just broke everything. Do not do that. Don't know why I did that, but do not do that. I did it because I wanted to see what would happen. Do not do that. If what happens is it breaks everything. I had to reinstall everything. Not too much of a big deal. It took me uh, maybe, I don't know, it didn't take me very long, half an hour or something. It's, it's a pretty simple process. NetBSD has actually a pretty simple installation process. Um, mm. The hard thing is getting networking to work. Okay, so the last time I did this, I managed it, and when I managed it, I said that I'd managed it in the video Assorted Musings. Fortunately, right at the start of that video, it's a seven hour video, but right at the start of the video, I mentioned that I fixed it. However, I do not really say how I fixed it. It's very cryptic. It's very cryptic. Because I was just too excited about having fixed it to really mention it. And I think in my head I was thinking, well, I'll never have to do that again. I have to do that again. Now, if you look at that video, which I actually have up somewhere uh, over here. If you look at that video, right, this is, this is my fucking forensic analysis I have to do on my past self. So if you look at that video, you can see that I'm I'm using this monitor. You you can you can't maybe if I zoom in, you can kind of tell. With, with, is it this com this computer this computer this computer? All right, you can kind of tell that I'm not using either of these computers. I'm I'm actually pointing to this monitor down there, and the only reason I would be using that monitor is if I was looking things, if I was using my Raspberry Pi, which makes sense because I might have been doing the research on my Raspberry Pi while using my ThinkPad to do other stuff. I don't know. 
maybe I just thought it was cool at the time. So my current plan is, so in that video, I say something along the lines of, uh, if you want to install, if you want to make Wi-Fi work on NetBSD, this forum article is correct. Unfortunately, the quality of that video and the recording is too low to tell what forum article I'm referring to. And then I say, but you have to put this thing, and I point to a specific line in the art, in the, the thing on the web page. I point to a specific, specific line. I say, you have to put this line in your rc.conf. I can't tell what the line says. And then I mumble something about what the line says. Uh, can't tell exactly what it is. But because I'm recording it in the same quality I'm recording this video, because it was a seven hour long video. So low, low quality so that I had enough space to edit it. So my plan right now is to get my Raspberry Pi back up and running so that I can go into my, what I assume is Firefox, maybe Chromium, I don't remember what I was using, my browser in Raspberry Pi, and we'll look at the history, then go through all the web pages I had opened in the history until I find something that resembles what I have open in that video, and then try and figure out what the fuck I did in the past to make this work. Because I, I tried to figure it out on my own for the past like three hour, two, two, three hours. I couldn't figure it out. Maybe, maybe just two hours. Let's, let's, be, let's be not over, let's not over exaggerate. About two hours. I couldn't figure it out on my own. Uh, um, I remember last time it was three, two days. So I, I feel like if I've already done it, I can just look at what I did in the past. And so I'm going to get my Raspberry Pi set up now. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to try. referring to in that video has been deleted because I went through my history and the only thing that was a forum that looks like the one hold on one second uh, I'm I, okay so the control button on this computer is broken which means I can't use control C to end a process um, which I'm not really sure how to fix but anyway look at that it's pinging Google it's fucking working um, now I can just restart that computer because I can't stop it from just continuously pinging Google. Uh, anyway, it, that's a good thing though. It's fucking working. But uh, anyway, I fixed this in a completely different way than I fixed it last time um, because what I did doesn't match what I said in the video. So I don't know what the fuck I did last time. Um, and I don't really know what the fuck I did this time. Um, it just sort of worked at some point. I don't even know what I changed. Um, I think, no, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not even going to pretend like I know, but maybe, all right, I don't want to get too hyped because I've got it working.
one slightly oh, got my glasses. One slightly annoying thing about B, about B, uh, NetBSD is that it will not support the latest version of Cube Browser. It only supports a very old version of Cube Browser, which is uh, it gives you it doesn't work very well. Basically, it, it it's broken. Um, so I'm using Firefox right now. Uh, which is fine, you know, I'm, I'm okay with Firefox. Uh, there's another problem, which is, yeah, the control button on this computer doesn't work, which is which is kind of a, a, a reasonably large problem. Um, but uh, it is basically working, I believe. I would like to get a nicer wall. I, I, get a, I got a wallpaper, but it's, it's a, I, I, I don't know why. I, it's fucked. It's too pixelated, so I, I need a nicer wallpaper. Uh, but um, yeah, things are happening. We're getting a computer. We're getting one going. Uh, I'd like to get a get a wallpaper. Plus, preferably some anime bullshit. I'm I'm doing Tenchi no 3P right now. Seeing if I can get a wallpaper from that show. This this is a massive image, but I think if I set this as the wall, it's not the correct aspect ratio, so it'll just be zoomed in in like a weird place. It's not really what I want. Uh, this one I I think it's too small, or maybe I downloaded maybe I just downloaded the wrong version of it. Maybe maybe I can get a better version of this wallpaper. Because this looks, this was not fixed. Yeah, cause this should be fine. I don't know what the fuck I did wrong. Okay, now if I run fucking what should it be fair dash bg dash dash fill and then uh, home lane uh, downloads paper run dot jpeg. No, that didn't work. Is that? Oh, did I get? I think I got. I think I got the the dash as well. I think it's dash dash bg and then dash fill. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wallpaper. Uh, you know, this kind of cuts off in a weird place. It cuts off in a weird place, guys. <laughs> uh, you can see it. Can you see that? Hold on, this is in the way a little bit. But, uh, this is the wallpaper. <laughs> I guess you can't see it anyway because I've got this stupid fucking filter on. But it, it works, it's high quality and it, it is working. And that is in, that should run at startup according to, to my, my calculations that should run at startup. Uh, I, I need to figure out how to fair. Maybe I can like wallpaper um, cropping or something or position. I would like a nicer terminal than X term. X term is kind of shit. Uh, oh, maybe BG Center? That's a good idea. Uh, fair dash dash BG dash Center. And then uh, home lane downloads. Uh, what's it called again? Oh, yeah, paper one dot JPEG. Okay, now let's see that. Oh, now it's just fucking huge and in the wrong place. Uh, I'm not sure what to do about this. I think I'm just going to have to download a another wallpaper that's in a better aspect ratio. It shouldn't be doing this on camera anyway. Yes, some people in the past have tried to argue, believe it or not, that I am not the most based individual in the world. 
And so this will be the end of this video, I believe. If, and then I can hopefully be bothered to edit this at some point. Um, some people have tried to argue that I am not the most based individual in the world. Um, those people are, are wrong. And we will prove them wrong in this final clip of the video. This computer is very slow. I'm going to need to put you down because I'm going to log in, which is faster with two hands. Don't worry about that music you can hear in the background. You'll find out about that in, in a second. All right, let's start X, and here we will see the baseness. I'm hoping my wallpaper actually works. No? No wallpaper. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, why is that not working? Why is that not working? What did I do wrong? Why is that not working? All right, let's get back to you in a second with my baseness when I have a wallpaper. Uh, fuck it, I'll, I'll, I'll fix that another day. I'll, I'll just do it manually. Um, <laughs> fair dash dash b b g dash fill slash home lane downloads and then paper one dot jpeg. There we go, wallpaper. Okay, let me show. We're now going to show you how based I am. Okay, first thing that's based, this wallpaper, this is La Luna, it's kind of lewd, it's a bit of a lewd wallpaper because I'm based. Uh, this wallpaper is La Luna from Magical Marriage which is a good visual novel. Um, La Luna is best girl from that. Okay, now let's show you why I'm based. So I have, this is, my computer is running NetBSD. That's fucking based, right? You can see it if I type in near fetch. You can see how I'm running NetBSD. That's the NetBSD logo. You can see it right there, how I'm fucking based. This is Xterm. Xterm is a reasonably good terminal emulator. It's not the best one, but I, it's reasonably good. It's also not riced yet. Maybe one day it will be. But for now, I actually think it looks pretty decent by default. Also, my fonts are shit. My fonts will be good at uh, one one day. My fonts will exist. There's also no bar because uh, I haven't... Uh, Polybar doesn't exist in the repos of fucking NetBSD, and I've never used another bar except for the, I, the default inbuilt i3 bar, and I'm not running i3, nor do I have any desire to run i3, so I need to look for a different bar, but I ha I, I don't know anything else other than Polybar. So I'm going to have to look that up. But anyway, regardless of that, let me show you why I'm based. If I press super F, you can see it will take a minute because this computer is incredibly slow, which is one of the reasons I installed NetBSD. A browser opens up. You might be like, that doesn't look like a browser, but that is actually a browser. If I, I, can, I can go to like YouTube or something, YouTube.com, and a browser opened up. And you might think, what sort of browser is this? Uh, again, this computer is very slow. It's it's just an old and shit computer. It it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that my I've done anything wrong. I've done everything right. Look, it's it's fucking Wi-Fi as well. That's another important thing. Don't know how to turn the brightness down. Haven't figured that bit out yet. Also, not signed into YouTube. So, Mr. Beast videos. Get ready for lots of Mr. Beast videos. Uh, but yeah, you can see I'm I'm if I. I I, I, I uh, can't really fucking scroll down on this, can I? Can't really, can't, literally unusable. Literally can't even use YouTube because of the big fucking thing. All right, let's open a more based website. What's a more based website that I could that I could open that's more based than than YouTube? What about some sort of? Oh, I know. Let's let's open um four dash ch dot net. I think it's dot net. Yes. Okay. Uh, there we go. Here we go. This is now this DQN. Let's call it DQN because I'm just I'm a based guy. Now this is this is what baseness looks like. Um. Uh, yes. This is this browser is different from the browser I use on the other computer. This is Vimb, which is another Vim bindings uh, browser. 
it's even more minimal. It's it's a I would say it's about halfway in terms of minimalism between Cute Browser and um, Surf, which is the subtlest browser. Surf is so minimal that it's unusable. Uh, um, Cube Browser is not particularly minimal. I mean, it's more minimal than all of the mainstream browsers, but it's not like super efficient and minimal, mostly because it can't be because it's a good web browser and the web is not minimal. Um, this is like a kind of a middle ground. And I'm fairly comfortable with it. I would say I like it. I li I've been I'm liking VimB so far. I haven't raced it at all or anything, but it's, it seems to be cool. Um, and I have all my key bindings and shit. I got D menu. I got fucking D menu going. Maybe I should have done with, gone with Rofi, because I've never used Rofi before. Never had a computer with a Rofi setup. Okay, let's let's now prove to you how fucking based I am. So we got the the NetBSD machine. Then we got oh oh you thought I was done. Then we got the the fucking Manjaro. I know cringe. It's just too much effort to migrate everything over to Arch or maybe some other distro that's Arch. What other good Arch-based distros are there? I know there's Artix. I don't know why I'm against just using Arch. I don't want to just be an Arch user, you know, it's a meme. Being an Arch user is a meme. I don't I don't want to be a meme. I don't want to be the ThinkPad Arch user stereotype. I want to have, you know, I want to have a sense of individuality, which is why I installed NetBSD. Uh, NetBSD, not usable as a daily driver desktop OS. Uh, would not recommend anyone do that, particularly. But here is my beautiful baby. Um, yeah. But, but oh, you thought I was done. Oh, you thought I was done. Raspberry Pi running Raspbian um, over there with the with the motherfucking GD, what, what's it called? Digi Carrot, Digi Carrot fucking wallpaper, you know, killing it over there. That's my fucking Raspberry Pi. Yeah, and then over here, I've got my Mac. Now, many people don't know this, <laughs> but Mac is actually a BSD-based uh, operating system, so technically this is also running BSD. <laughs> that's how I'm gonna. That's how I'm gonna defend myself. I'm gonna defend myself by saying Mac is actually a distro of BSD, and I'm playing um, uh, fucking um, fucking. <laughs> It's something. I'm not looking it up on VNDB right now. I'm not doing that. A Bokuto Koi Suru Ponkotsu Akuma, which I need to actually mark as playing. Uh, so far, pretty good. So far, pretty good. Um, Bokuto Koi Suru Ponkotsu Akuma, which I'm currently reading. And then I have my broken windows laptop which doesn't work um in multiple ways it doesn't work on a hardware level or a software level it's completely broken and because it's a windows laptop it's not fun to fix like this was fun to fix it wasn't fun in a traditional way but it was like gratifying because when you break something you can you can go into the fuck everything you see i like this is the thing that's so great about unix operating systems is that everything's a file. I've heard people talk about why that's so good in the past and not really understood it until fairly recently. Everything is a file. Is like It's very useful. It's like genuinely a useful feature. When something breaks, it's a file that's broken. You go into it and it's a text file and you can use Vim to edit it. Like, I don't know, it's good. It, it, I got Wi-Fi working. It's all cool. Uh, yeah, Windows, when Windows breaks, you're basically just fucked. Um, plus, these are, they're not quite the same model of laptop, but they're basically the same model. They're like, this is a ProBook 4330S, and this is a ProBook 4340S. So, they're very slightly different models, but they're basically identical. 
uh, and uh, if you think this one is already slow and it's running NetBSD, which is widely known to be a minimal operating system that is good for old hardware that's slow, and this is already fairly slow, uh, I think you can imagine how slow Windows runs on this fucking computer. It runs very slow. Um, it's a, it's pain. It's pain to do this. I don't want to do it because it's pain. So I'm not going to do it. Or I can't be bothered. Maybe one day I'll do it. Hey, maybe one day I'll put fucking Plan 9 from user space on that just so I have the full the full spectrum of operating systems. Uh, but yeah, that's this video. I'm the most based human being on planet Earth. Here, I'll turn my light off to get the full lane experience. Do. Sometimes I just do this. There is absolutely no reason to. Um, like, I only ever use this laptop and very occasionally this laptop to play games on and stuff like that and make music. But I pretty much only ever use this laptop. Uh, even though I have this laptop, I'm pretty certain I'm never going to use it, really. Because, um, actually, the keyboard feels pretty nice, but not as nice as the ThinkPad keyboard. And uh, it's, uh, I don't know, there's just no reason to use it. I have everything already that I could possibly need. I mean, what am I going to do? Have the only, the only use case I can think of is I have Element up on this laptop, and then I just use this laptop for everything else. Like, I, I didn't, but I've tried that before with my Raspberry Pi, where I had, I, I tried it for a while having Discord up on my Raspberry Pi, and then, so that way it just, and it was just annoying to have to switch keyboards and stuff. So... Uh, yeah, I'm probably not going to do that. There's not really any reason to have this laptop. Anyone want it? Anyone want a NetBSD laptop? I'm kidding. I'm not giving it away. This is mine. Fuck you. Uh, yeah. Computers. Lane. Le Wired. Le Serial Experiment. Um... If anyone's got any ideas for what to do with a random, like, what, what I, I, my workflow is just, um, I don't know, like, what do I do with this? What do I use this for? Um, I mean, it'd be good as, like, I mean, good for anything. Like, pretty much anything you can do on a laptop, you can do on this laptop. Uh, although, I don't know if, why, I don't think wine will work. <laughs> Do you know what? I wonder if wine is uh, in the, the ripples. I really highly doubt it. I think wine is a Linux only thing. Or well, actually, no, it's not because it's on Mac. Uh, PKG IN installed wine. Wine, is, wine exists. Wine exists. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm installing wine. I wonder if wine tricks exists. I did I did not expect this. This is an unexpected development. It's wine five point zero five I think that's an old version of wine. Pretty old. A lot of the stuff in the repos are pretty old. Yo, crazy shit going on. Maybe I should try and only run non-proprietary software on this computer. So maybe wine, maybe wine is a mistake. All right, well, wine worked. I could install like DOSBox, use this as like a to play Doom and shit. I could. I maybe I wait, I don't know if that'll work. Maybe like maybe I can use retro arch on this. Turn this into like a retro gaming thing. I don't know. Might be kinda of neat. This actually has a disk drive, like a CD drive. A CD ROM drive, which none of my other computers do. So that's kinda of cool. Uh Yeah. I have no, I have no fucking use for this. Oh, I also installed NNN N instead of Ranger, so I can use this now. I also actually installed it on this computer too. Uh, oops.
don't know why I tried to open it in D menu. Oh my god. There we go. N and N. It's here. Not as good as I don't. It's good. It's it's much faster. I can feel it being responsive and fast. But it doesn't show thumbnail images, which is kind of a shame. I kind of need thumbnail images. Uh. So yeah. This is fucking blinding. Look at that. Look how blindingly white this is. Um, I'm just trying to think of things to do with this. I don't even need Firefox. I could just uninstall Firefox. Uh, maybe I should change the wallpaper to something less lewd. And then this could be like my portable going outside laptop. Maybe. Like... I, I, what the fuck am I talking about? When do I ever go outside? Also, that's really stupid because I'd need to connect to public Wi-Fi and connecting to Wi-Fi is, a, is as we've seen, a bit of a problem on this computer. Uh, so yeah, never mind. That's a, that's, a, that's a bad idea. I mean, if wine works, I don't see why I couldn't play visual novels on this. I mean, I definitely could. I could play some. I'm sure Canon would work. And, like, some of the older ones. I don't think modern visual novels would work on this. Um, I don't know. I'm just stuck here with an extra laptop that I have nothing to do with. But it's cool. It's cool to have many laptops. It would be even cooler to have many desktops. But that's expensive and difficult to when your most of your room is a bed. Have you noticed that most of my room is a bed? Well, that's yeah, that's why I'm a laptop guy because most of my room is a bed. If most of my room was a desk, I'd probably be a desktop guy. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything to do with this piece of shit laptop. That BSD is cool though, and um, that's it. That's the video, I think. Goodbye. Don't forget that you will uh, die someday. Everything is transient.